Hello again, everybody. This is Joseph with now a tutorial. This is about 2015 to 16. Toyota Camrys, more modern cars we're talking about. Uh, problems with the reverse lights. You know, the circuit that we talked about before. Usually, you have to put the parking lever in reverse. There's a relay, there's a fuse. Now, Toyota Camrys are a little more difficult. If they're hybrids or not hybrids, almost the same idea applies. So, where do we start with? Again, where do we start with when we look at a schematic? Well, again, if I'm troubleshooting, and obviously my reverse lights are not working, I can start from the reverse lights itself, instead of starting from the fuse. I can start over here. These are the two backup lights. Obviously, when we put in reverse, these are illuminated. I can start over here and say, okay, let me go back up here. One goes to ground. Another one over here goes to this. This goes to a relay. Now, when you come to this point, you say, okay, now it's a little confusing. So we know when there's a relay, there has to be a B plus coming through a fuse. And sure enough, backup lamps, we have a fuse. Only 7.5 amps, not that much. Remember, we're not going to pull that much current when both are lit. Maybe each one will take 3 amps, whatever. Uh, uh, 3 amps this one, 3 amps that one, maybe a little more. And the relay also takes a little current. So uh, roughly 7.5 amps. So we come to this point. But in order for this to be activated, as you know, this has to be activated first. Now we come over here. This is the path of the difficulty, how to figure it out. So that's why you, ha you have to look and scan at main components here, what it's referring to. So now we have to go back to the top. Now we can start with the fuses. Because if we, if we continue in this path, we still have to figure out where it's coming from. It will not really help us. So, as you see over here, engine control module, ECM. Now, does 12 volts come from, from the ECM from the computer for the reverse lights? So, someone asked me the question. He says, maybe it could come from the computer. Not likely. And we'll prove otherwise why it doesn't. Sometimes, for the relay, yes, 12 volts does come from from the computer to give 12 volts and the other side is grounded however let's see before we make that assumption let's see what's on the other side connected to this as you can see we expect the reverse lights the park neutral position switch which is here right uh we expect that to be in reverse because any other thing if you put it in park or neutral when you obviously when you start the car right if you put it in park or neutral when you start the car, it will not turn on the reverse lights. So therefore, let's continue over here. Come over here, back up here. Over here, a diode in automatic transmission. And sure enough, we come over here. So therefore, it's a little tricky. There are two relays. One relay activating this one. One activating this one. In other words, ignition one, and the other words is accessories one. A relay energized, a relay energized. These are hot with accessories, and this is hot with ignition two. These are relays that activate current through these fuses. Now, if you follow this path, or choose a path, or choose this path, we come through pin one of this, and this is a diode. A diode is a one-way valve. That means... It's a one-way direction. So in other words, current can only go in one way, can't go, on, can't go the other way. Sort of like a one-way street. Traffic can go in one-way street, but it, you can't go the other way. It's a one-way street. Same idea. So let's follow from the... We went through this junction connector, through this jumper, this wire, through pin one, out this diode. This is called the anode. It's called the cathode, the bar over here. Goes through here, goes through here. Now it goes to a couple of places. 
it goes also to transmission control switch probably get ignition ig of pin 4 on the green wire this is the green wire so probably gives it 12 volts also now we come through what about the other side this is right here the green a connection now you come over here to pin one of the park neutral switch which is over here and now when this is the park neutral switch is in reverse obviously then it comes out too and it comes as you can see it goes also to this transmission control ecu it goes also to ecm but the main point is it comes out here goes through this goes through here to this to set up a magnetic field in this part of the relay then when that happens this is pulled in now you have that current that we talked about to go here here goes in five pin five comes out pin three comes out over here it splits for one bulb and the other bulb then to ground therefore this is the tough path to understand this path over here that gives a that goes to the relay actually comes from through the switch through this one through this diode there are two diodes coming from here it can all current can also come from this one through this one through this one also so current can go this way it can only uh, it can also go this way depending which relay is energized so therefore looks a little tough again the computer in this case really would not give 12 volts because it is connected to the 12 volt line so therefore it really wouldn't make sense for the computer to say let's give it 12 volt if this is not here if this part of the, the equation is not here i might say okay maybe the computer the ECM is giving 12 volts, but it's not. So therefore, 12 volts comes again. It could go in this path, the orange. Current can also go in this one, depending which one, through the switch, right, through the park neutral switch. Back up here through this connector, energize this, and then this will be energized. Now, where's a good point to start? Let's say both reverse sides don't go. So let's say... Like a friend was going and driving his car, going to a parking spot. Obviously, he had to go in reverse. When he went in reverse, the guy in back of him started honking his horn and saying, hey, <clears throat> you have no reverse lights, right? So, obviously, you don't know that until somebody tells you that. So, what happens? <clears throat> he says, oh, could be both lights are out. What would cause both of them to be out? Now, the first thing is, the switch could be faulty. If the switch is faulty, that means whichever relay I am activating, it will never come on. Because everything is common and has to go through the switch. Right? Other thing is the relay also might be the problem because if this relay is activated, this relay is activated, that will do the same thing. They all have to come to, through this. That could, that could do it also. <clears throat> Where's the best point to, to measure? Can it be that this, is, this fuse is, backup fuse is bad? It, well, this connection could be bad. The, the junction connector could be bad. And that's why where they put it here or here also, this one could be bad because it's common to both of these. So this one over here, <clears throat> again, where would be a good point to go and measure 12 volts to see what's going on? Well, <clears throat> you could go to the connectors itself and measure 12 volts and measure 12 volts. But the fact that we, the fact that both are out tells us it's some, something common to both. So therefore, it could be this line is open. Where's a good point to measure? Well, again, <clears throat> if we go over here and measure 12 volts over here, Right, this is activated. We get that means the switch, the park neutral switch, all of this circuitry is working. If we get 12 volts over here, the key to this is, and I call this the um, point of impact, excuse me, po <clears throat> point of impact. Right here, you go. Once I know this is 12 volts, I know 12 volts comes in here, I go right here. Of course, you have to put a relay inserter 
you have to put the relay in there and at the same time measure it in circuit. But this is a good access point because it's easy to get to. Everywhere else is t difficult to get to. I can't get to the park neutral switch. I can't get to the other relay. This is an easy place to get to, to get access under the hood in the fuse box. That's where the relay is. So if I have pins two, one, three, five, I go right to pin three if I have a relay inserter. The fact that I have 12 volts over here tells me all that circuitry is working correctly. That's a one-shot troubleshooting. So that means I have to follow it and say, okay, maybe there's a broken wire, the one that goes from here to feed both of these. Okay? That's it. One more time. I go to this relay. I measure 12 volts. That tells me 12 volts is coming here. That tells me 12 volts is going through this. That tells me 12 volts is going through this. This is good. That tells me 12 volts is going through this. This is good. That tells me that 12 volts is going through this junction, this diode, this one. That tells me 12 volts is coming through here, through this one, whichever is energized. Good. That's good in one shot. That's why I said this is the point of impact, I call it. When I measure 12 volts over here, I know everything is working in that path. If this fuse is good. Everything over here is good. Must be over here somewhere. The line is open through this. What happens if I measure zero over here? <clears throat> then I would come over here and say, at pin one, how much do I measure? 12 volts? Then I know this is good. The fact that I have zero over here tells me that maybe there's a problem over here or maybe there's a problem over here with the fuse or the wire, of course. The fact that I have 12 volts over here. If I don't have 12 volts over here, then I have to go and backtrack and say, maybe this is open. Maybe this is open, this wire. Maybe this is open. Maybe this is open. Of course, you could go to the, to the, to the windings, to the coil, to the relay winding and try to jump them and see which one will give you the reverse lights on when, when you're putting the parking lever in reverse. So therefore, a little tricky. Some, some of them have like a smart key feature, obviously, where you would come close to, to the car and you have the key in your pocket. It activates the car and all that while you have the key in your pocket or something. You can act. It activates the when you come close to the car. The other question was how when when you come with the smart key or something like that. How come you can energize the lights? Let's say somebody comes close to your car, you can hit the the smart key, and somebody will see the lights flashing. Obviously, they'll they'll be a little more intimidated to come to your car. It says he. So he says the the lights come on. Maybe he says maybe the reverse lights come on, but the reverse lights cannot come on because it has to go through this switch, this park neutral switch that has to be in reverse. And obviously, you're outside the car, you can't do that. So the other lights can can come on, but not the reverse lights. Another thing, it is t it is a little complicated when you can't see the reverse lights, or there is no indication that the reverse lights are out. As opposed to, if you ever have a, the left signal, the right signal indicator, one, if the bulb is out on the left side or right side, whatever it is, the front or the back, you'll have the flasher clicking fast. Or you, you see this, the indicator going very uh, very quickly, saying click, 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 right? Instead of click, 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 right? The flasher. So anyway, it t at, least it at least it tells you there's an indication one of the bulbs is out. It would be nice if it would tell you the reverse lights are out so that when you do go in reverse, the guy in, in back of you expects you and sees you to go in reverse. Otherwise, he will not go, he will not understand you're going in reverse because your lights are not on until already you're getting closer to him, obviously. So it's a safety hazard to me. What I do is I go in, in back of a car or something and I put the, the, the parking lever in, um, in reverse. I use the reflection of the other car or some part to make sure that the reverse lights, I can see the reflection of the reverse lights and I can see the reflection of the brake lights. Or I could put something on the, on the pedal, um, a, a, a piece of wood, whatever, on the piece of wood to, to hold, on, to hold uh, the brake pedal. Then I go to the back and make sure the brake lights are on. 
So again, it's not that easy with Toyotas. Toyota Camry, hybrids and everything. Not that easy. That's what we're doing modern cars. Another question that was asked, which school did I attend for automotive? I recommend before you go to automotive school, please go to an, an electronic school. But to answer the question, the one I went to was Lincoln Tech in the Northeast, and that's a very good school if you have children or sons, daughters. They, they love cars like we all do. I would definitely recommend that one. It's a great school to go to. Uh, sort of a no-nonsense school. No tolerance. You have to be there on time. Uniforms have to be clean. You have to clean up your stations, clean the tools. It's sort of a no-nonsense military attitude that they have there. But you know what? It gets you ready for the real work environment. They kind of break you in, as to say. So definitely I would recommend that school. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please see my other videos about transistors, Ohm's Law. I hope one day to have a live chat about electronics. I noticed one thing, that there's a lot of electronic problems out there. Believe me, I see more and more as I do the videos. I get asked questions. There's more, a lot of electronic questions, and there's a lot to learn also. I hope this helped you. Please go over it. It's a little hard to understand, I know. Ba <coughs> basically... <coughs> Excuse me, getting over a call. Um, anyway, the ECM, why does the ECM have to know this when this is in reverse? Well, it has to know when it's in reverse because it has to talk to the uh, transmission control module to obviously activate the correct solenoids to either upshift or downshift. And uh, when, uh, when, you reverse it, when you are in reverse and other gears, so it has to know which, which position you are in to enable... The transmission to do the correct gear shifts as an indicator over here i saw it goes also to also to navigation system it also goes to ship position indicator probably that's the light that turns on or when you put the parking uh lever in re, in, in, the re, in the position it gives you the indication which you're in a reverse sometimes in the dashboard so it's just an indicator so 12 volts goes here also so the fact that you have 12 volts again the fact that you have 12 volts over here tells me, I'll zoom out, all of this is getting the 12 volts through the switch, through here, through here, through here, or through the orange one, through here, through here, through here, depending on which one is activated. That means all of this circuit is working good. In one shot, I go over here, I measure 12 volts over here. I measure 12 volts over here, I measure 0 volts at the other one, that's good. But I like to go one shot troubleshooting, boom, right here, 12 volts. I know all this is working. So we have 12 volts out the fuse, 12 volts going to the diode. <clears throat> you have a little voltage drop, but I put a 12 volts just to make it simpler. 12 volts into the into the um, into the uh, uh, position switch, park neutral uh, position switch, 12 volts coming out, 12 volts going into this junction connector, it's just a wire. 12 volts coming out, 12 volts going in, 12 volts going out, 12 volts going into the relay, coming out is 0 volts, make sure it's 0 volts, sometimes you have a, a ground resistance increasing it, and then that would be a problem with the relay, anyway, like I said, thanks for watching, please subscribe to the channels on Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph, please recommend it to other people if you can, and thanks for watching.